exactly right. This is what we should be doing. We should be doing a big spring workshop for this. Uh, am I the only one that's really ready for spring? Yes. How many people are just done with winter, right? So the, the spring is just such a glorious time of year, and I don't think anybody appreciates spring as much as New Englanders, right? Uh, I, I think it's just this incredible time for, for renewal, right? It's time to declutter and to detoxify and to reorganize and re-energize. So we thought it was a perfect subject for tonight, and uh, it, it's just uh, such a pleasure for me to be up here with this lady. Uh, to share her with you because I get so much of her and I feel blessed by that. We've been together for about 23 years. Ooh. Did I say about? Yeah. <laughs> about 23 years. Since 92. Since 92. Don't do the math. All right. So Camilla and I actually met in, uh, in grad school. Uh, we met like the first month of school of a four, four year program. Uh, then we did our internship together. We did our associate. In, in Arkansas, we did our associateship together in Virginia, uh, and then we opened this practice here over 17 years ago together. So uh, I know how wonderful this woman is. And when I first met her, I actually thought I had my act together pretty good. Uh, imagine that. Uh, and you know, and this one has taught me so much. And I appreciate her perspective on health, on wellness, on life, on doing life together. So uh, I'm excited to to, to do this workshop with her. Well, right back at you. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so, I'm so excited to be here tonight. We, um, like Stephen said, um, this has been such a journey, just a wonderful journey. And what's so exciting is to see many familiar faces after all these years, people who are you know, committing and recommitting over and over to walking the wellness path. And, um, you know, I, I can't think of a better better man to walk along in life with and I've had the pleasure and privilege to um, start this practice many years ago and um, I've been uh, caring for our children primarily for the past 10 years now um, and um, it, that has you know, that's yeah. been, that is an amazing amazing mind-boggling journey um, but like Dr. Steven said, this is really one of our babies. Our, our practice and our commitment to this community and to the families of this community to help navigate um, and, and guide people as you choose your wellness path. And, and our primary focus being chiropractic because with that you're, without a well-functioning nurse system, your body's just not going to function properly, and we know that. There are also other uh, aspects of health and wellness. It's always, all of our habits together create something big and beautiful. And the, um, uh, the sum are greater than the component, components individually, right? So uh, the purpose for this workshop tonight is to help point out some, some habits and some, um, uh, some aspects of wellness that we can incorporate into our daily life. And there is a, when it comes to uh, spring cleaning, there are a lot, of, a lot of different ways you can look at uh, the term spring yeah. cleaning. All right, so let's, let's start to break this down a little bit. What I'm going to try to do is just sort of set some ground rules and give us some context for what we're going to be covering here tonight. And this is one of my favorite graphics. For some of you, some of our veterans, you've seen this before. But what I'm going to ask you to do for me tonight, we've, we've all made a commitment to be here tonight, right? So can I ask everybody here, can I, can I ask you to make the commitment to really be here? Like, really be here. Can I get a raise of hands if you're ready to really learn something here tonight? Because if we came here tonight and we're just informational, I want you to know in our eyes, we feel like we failed you, okay? We're not here just to be interesting or entertaining or informational. Truly, we want to be transformational. And transformational means that you are going to leave here changed. And if we do our job well here tonight, you'll look at your health in an entirely different way, your body in an entirely different way, and you should never be able to look at your health the same way again, all right? <laughs> So when we're, when we're looking at this continuum, this is a phenomenal way for you to create a frame of reference 
for your life in a really dynamic way, okay? So this health continuum represents all of us, okay? What I'll tell you is everyone in this room has two things in common, all right? Number one, you fall somewhere on this continuum, and number two, you are moving in a, a direction. Say yes if you understand that, okay? Yes. So there is no stasis in, in health, okay? You're never static, you're never stuck in one place. Your health, your body, your life is very dynamic, yes? So your body is moving one way or the other. You're either moving towards health or away from health. So first thing I want you to do is I want you to take a look at this graph and understand that this over here on the far left-hand side, this red end is sickness, okay? Far left is dead, okay? We come to the center, so we've got sick on the left. The center is not sick. And on the far right, this is health, and this is perfect health, 100% healthy on the far right-hand side. Say so yes if you get that. Yes. So nobody here is dead, and nobody here is perfectly healthy, right? So I want you to picture yourself somewhere on this graphic and, and, and visualize right now, today, where are you on that graphic? Now watch, there's sick, there's not sick, and there's healthy. Okay? Even a child can tell you there's a difference between not sick and healthy. Say yes if you get that. Okay? So there's a lot of very unhealthy people out there today that are not sick. If you were asked them, if you were sick, no, I'm not sick. Okay? Are you healthy? Well, well. Okay? So there's sick, not sick, and healthy. Unfortunately, there's a lot of people out there that are non-symptomatic and undiagnosed, but they're tragically ill. So what I want you to do is I want you to visualize where are you on that graphic? Everybody have that? Have you plotted yourself? Now, second question. Where are you going? What direction are you headed in? Okay? You get to choose one or the other. Are you headed towards greater health or are you headed away from health right now? The next question. Where would you like to be? Seriously, like, don't joke about this. Where would you like to be? Where would you want to be? And don't let any of the orthodoxy, any of the things that you've been told or heard or your past or your experience, or what you perceive to be your current reality, where would you like to be? And where would you like your family to be? Where would you like your spouse to be, your children to be, maybe your future children or grandchildren? Where would you like them to be? So where do you want to be on that graphic? And last question, how long do you think it would take to get there? Keep that in mind. So tonight we're going to unpack strategies that will help you recognize that you can control the direction as well as the velocity at which you're traveling. Next fundamental to understand. This is a construct for what determines your health. Okay? This is a classic teaching tool okay, called the Venn diagram. All right? So this represents three domains of your life. So you'll notice there's three domains up here. The top one is genetics. The second one on the right is environment, and the third one is lifestyles, okay? So if you were to read the, 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 the traditional media, okay, the popular media today, they would have you believe that it's all up to your genes, right? Have you guys gotten that flavor, gotten that sense that, you know what, you're at effect. You're a victim. You know, you've been dealt your cards and that's it, no matter what you do, that's what, it's all predetermined. Do you get that sense in the media? It's a very popular message, okay? That drives geneticists geneticists crazy. They hate to hear that. They're like, whoa, 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 whoa. That's not what we're saying. That's not what we're telling you. We're telling you that your genes are a genetic potential. And how you choose to live your life will determine which genes get upregulated and which genes get downregulated. In other words, your lifestyle and your environment will combine together and influence your genes and it'll determine which genes get expressed and which ones do not get expressed. Say yes if you get that. So you have major, major influence here, all right? So what are the influential <coughs> domains? Your environment and your lifestyles. Okay, so let's look at this first one, genetics. If your genes, I like to say, are a piano that God gives you and you determine what music you play, okay? We really can't pick our genes, right? Because you didn't get to pick your parents, all right? So here's, you guys know I'm a strategic guy, right? So here's my strategy. I couldn't pick my genes. But I can pick my kids' genes. <laughs> I searched the world. <laughs> I put ads in newspapers. I saw this one. Young, beautiful, blonde, sweet, 
wants to be a chiropractor will travel. <laughs> so, you can't pick your genes, okay? So your genes are your genes, all right? Your environment. Now your environment, for the sake of this conversation, let's say it's the external environment. It's the air you breathe, it's the quality of the, the water you drink, it's the sunlight coming through the ozone layer or not, okay? It's the, the glue that they use to hold this carpet to the ground. It's the paint on the walls, okay? It's everything you're exposed to. Yes, you guys get it? External environment. You can make some choices, and we're gonna talk a little bit about that tonight, because you can really make some choices that make a big difference in your home and in your life, okay? Now let's talk about lifestyle. Lifestyle is where you have total autonomy. How you choose to eat, how you choose to move, and how you choose to think is totally up to you. Say yes if you believe that, okay? Here's the truth. If you don't believe that, you don't stand a chance. If you don't believe that, you do not stand a chance at being as healthy as you want to be. The way you choose to eat, and the way you choose to move, and the way you choose to think will come together, and that is your lifestyle, and that will determine which genes get turned up and which genes get turned down. Own that, okay? You're like the guy at the music board at the concert. You get to turn up the bass or turn up the treble. You, you decide with the choices that you make. Everybody good? Okay. Ground rule. The natural state of the human body is to express health. That is our default. We are programmed. We are hardwired to express health. The natural state of your body, of your body, of your body, of your body, your genes, every cell is programmed to express health. Say yes if you understand that. If you are not experiencing health or you're not expressing health, in other words, you're experiencing sickness or you're expressing sickness, it simply means that there is something that's interfering with the natural expression of your health. If you're not experiencing health, in other words, if you are having a crisis, if you're having a sickness or a condition, know that there is something that's interfering with the expression of health in your body. And there's only two things that create interference in the expression, the natural default of every cell of your body. There's only two things that create that interference to that expression, and that's toxicity and deficiency, or both. So deficiency means that there's something that's desperately required by your cells to express health that's missing in your lifestyle choices. How you choose to eat, how you choose to move, how you choose to think. Or, you're making choices that are toxic to that cell naturally. Okay, we're designed to be healthy in the right environment consistently over time. If you're making toxic choices, what you're doing is you're creating interference to the expression of health in your body. Everybody good? So tonight, we're going to talk detox, okay? And I'm going to say one more thing, and then I'm going to shut up. No. Uh, I'll be back. Don't worry. <laughs> so detox. People ask me all the time, you know, so doc, what kind of cleanse do you recommend? Right? What should I do for a detox? I just came back from a 12-day carnival cruise. I need to do a detox. I'm like, you need a psyche valve. <laughs> We cannot manage our health that way. That is not the way to, to manage your health or to how to achieve health, right? People go on these benders and these binges and then they think they're going to get their health back by doing a detox, right? Usually what this looks and sounds like is you're putting in a bunch of crap in your, into your body that's not supposed to be there. You're skipping all the good stuff that's supposed to be there, right? You're staying up all night long. God knows what's going on, right? This is a cruise, and you paid for this, right? <laughs> for all this vacation, right? So you come home and you're like, oh, I needed to go on a detox, right? And they want to know what should I take to cleanse my body. I need a cleanse. I need a detox, all right? So for, in, in our perspective, for, as wellness practitioners, detoxification means detoxing your choices. Say so yes, you get that. It's detoxing your lifestyle, detoxing your environment. It's not taking something into your body to detox your body, okay? Stop toxifying your body, okay? And make better choices. What we do like to see is people do fasts, okay? And we'll talk a little bit about that tonight, but instead of thinking detox, like putting something in my body to force it out, okay? Rather, think about fasting, and we can talk about some, some fasting in the, in the natural paleolithic rhythm fasts, okay? 
So that being said, Dr. Kimmel has brought some goodies for us, right? So this gal is so committed to our home life, our children, and raising them in this incredible environment that she's uh, she go far and wide to find products that that she you know will research or she'll look up and she'll replace one product that's toxic or deficient with another. So I asked her if she could bring some of her favorite products with us tonight and share with us categorically. Sound good? Okay. So. Um, Hey, let's talk a little bit about the home. Um, we're gonna we're gonna walk this. We're gonna go through home, heart, health. So let's start with the home. Um, what we we talk about just I guess some cleaning products first, and yep. I don't know if you want to do an overriding narrative. Or... Yep. But how about that for an exciting wake up call, right? And reminder that we have so much. There's we have so much power in terms of how how we express wellness, right? It's not how we were born and what genes we carry as much as it is our habits. And so this is not about, like Dr. Stimo was explaining, it's not about something that you do for a short period of time. This is about incorporating good habits and um, over time uh, you, you're making room for, you, you're, you have less, there's less need for that in your life which is adds to the toxicity part. And so when it comes to um, our home and the products that we choose for our home, I believe less is more. There is a gazillion, gazillion products out there and they want to make us believe that we need all of them. Really, when it comes to cleaning our home, uh, there is there, there are two things that you can clean almost anything with, and that's water and vinegar. Is this what you use out here? Yeah. Vinegar and water. It is it's inexpensive, and it's non-toxic, and it is antimicrobial, anti-mold, um, and it's really your very best choice. Um, let me see here. Where is my... Yeah. Is that European... Kind of phase because I know my mother's coming from Lisbon, that's all she ever used for growing up. Yeah, it's amazing when you're in Europe and you go through stores, you've got like seven items to choose from, yeah. not 17,000 types of cereal. <laughs> right? Well, European standards are much, much higher and they have a much, they are much stricter standards when it comes to um, all cleaning uh, products, cosmetics, body care products, and so on. So um, here it's very much loosey-goosey, and you pretty much get away with murder. So you really have to do your research, and um, not just go by what's, you know, what's the most popular thing to do at the time. So water and vinegar for your almost any surface, um, your windows, your, your floors, countertops, etc. You can add a little essential oil in there if you want to have a little bit of a different scent. Um, so there is a um, there's an interesting website that I like to uh, access for information, and it was interesting because I was looking up a few of the products, and there are a couple of <coughs> products that I'm going to just um, change because of the rating. Um, and it is, let me see here, the um, Environment Working Group, Environmental Working Group, or EWG.org, is a great, great website, a great resource for you to um We can link access. that right off the blog, right? So we put a link, a hyperlink up for yeah. everybody right yeah. off our blog. It's a, a non-profit organization of environmentally conscious uh, people that just want to provide people with um, information, consumers unbiased. with unbiased information on various levels of toxicity in various products. And it's, they basically rate from A to F. And you'd be surprised how many F products there are that have so many hazardous chemicals that the FDA has approved supposedly that they're selling out there. So. Just be very, very mindful and very conscientious about that. Um, and so vi vinegar and water is a, is a big a big thing. Um, when it comes to uh, cleaning your... Um, 
cleaning your sink, etc. Pure baking soda with water becomes like a little scouring um, agent that you can use, and this is also very deodorizing. So you can put it in your refrigerator, you can put it in on your sink, you can put it in your closet, you can sprinkle it in shoes. There are all kinds of wonderful, um, wonderful uses for that. Um, and so that is pretty much what we use for for cleaning. We don't use a whole lot of. Yeah, this is Mrs. Myers. Um, this is rated a C, actually, on the website. And so I'm going to actually find another one. That's I give it a D minus because the smell of it. Can I be transparent? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so <laughs> she, she keeps the kitchen so clean by the end of the day. She will not go to bed until the kitchen, the sink is clean, the kitchen is clean. And her feet are clean. The Swedes have this thing where they stand in the bathroom, they put their feet in the sink, and they wash, they wash their feet in the sink. And I'm looking at her. I'm like, if you fall, you're gonna fall into the shower. Why don't you use the shower? Right? So anyway, I'm, I, you know, very often I'm coming home late, and I'll and I'll get help get the kids down, and I'll eat my dinner afterwards, right? So she'll be cleaning the kitchen, and she sprays that stuff all over the place, and I'm forever just walking it. So just to smell it, I'm giving that stuff a D. <laughs> Sense. Now, interestingly enough, within a line there are various ratings. And so, if you look at the website I was, um, I was mentioning, this gets a C, but Mrs. Meyer's um, laundry detergent gets an F. Fortunately, I've never used that, but you know, you never know. So, you, you just really need to research each product that you use. And it shouldn't be too hard because there are not that many products that you need. And so, vinegar is your friend. You can put it in the toilet for, uh, you know, to deodorize and to clean as well. Um, and that's um, really the, one of the best clean products for the home. I want to talk a little bit about cooking, some of the staples for what you use for cooking. For cooking? Um, for, you mean for? Um, for eating. For eating, yeah. Coconut oil. And How many people are using coconut oil? Multiple uses. This is another one. Inside now, right? It's kind of universal. <laughs> Everyone needs a jar of this in the house. Huh? I put on my hair, my face, I eat it. Yeah. 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 I don't clean with it. No. Oh, okay. okay. Cleaning is so boring, we should on. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Clean riches the handles of his golf clubs. Clean up with that. <laughs> and um, so this is the, this is big in our home for for cooking. Um, it can sustain uh, higher heat um, or higher levels of heat. So you can saute in it, and uh, you know you make your eggs in it, and they taste like a little bit Caribbean. <laughs> you must feel like you're on a cruise, you know. So can I speak to that just a little bit with the, with the when she made mention of the heat tolerance with the oils? So when you heat an oil, it'll denature the oil, okay, and it turns the oil into a toxin. So when Dr. Kamal is making reference to it tolerates heat well and you can cook it at a higher temperature, that's one of the most critical things to understand about oils, because think about how you use oils, right? So you don't want to take a healthy oil or a, health, a relatively healthy oil, heat it up to the point where it denatures and it becomes a toxin. Okay, so that's where you know, cooking with coconut oil, not only is the lauric acid, which is the saturated fatty acid that makes up uh, coconut oil, um, it's, it's a, that's right, you heard me say saturated fatty acid, that's good for you, okay? Uh, there, that, it has its own nutrient qualities, like it, uh, it's a great antioxidant, it's antifungal, and antibacterial, uh, it's a great source of essential fatty acids like lauric acid, okay? Uh, and it tolerates heat well. Yep. Another um, another oil that tolerates heat well is um, olive oil, which is another staple in our home. Uh, you've heard about the Mediterranean diet, and I think most of the research is showing um, that along with paleo diet, something that is uh, Mediterranean-like is really um, 
one of the best ways to eat out there. We know they eat a lot of olive oil right. in the Mediterranean area. And one of the constructs in the bonfire program you hear us talk about when you're talking about diet style, every time you eat, you should ask, where are the fats? Where are the plants? Where is the protein? Okay, everybody say that with me. Where are the fats? Where is the plants? Where is the protein? Every time you eat. My three-year-old, when my kids were three years old, they could both say that. I'd go, we'd sit down and we'd be like, okay, honey, where are the plants? Right there. Where's the fats? Right there. Where's the protein? Right there. So they know that every time they're to eat, that's what they're looking for. Every time, even snacks, guys. So I bring this up because the, well, the Mediterranean diet, very often, if you look at the way they eat, where's the fats, where's the plants, where's the protein, you'll see it represented well there, right? But the uh, coconut oil is a great way to sort of sneak in some good fat. Because that's the hard one to find, right? I mean, if you're eating grass-fed meats and range-fed uh, meats and range-fed um, uh, eggs and wild game and fish, you're going to get the right uh, essential fatty acid, uh, omega-3, omega-6, that right ratio, okay? And you're going to get healthy fats that way, all right? So good lean cuts of lean meats, all right? Healthy meats, natural meats. But very often it's tough to sneak fats and protein into your snacks, which is why most people go totally sideways when they're snacking. Because everything you're eating is packaged, right? It comes out of bags and boxes, throw it right in the trash bag, okay? Because most likely it's a refined carbohydrate, okay? And it's going to create insulin sensitivity issues and a hormonal storm that leads to big obesity issues and chronic disease. So we want to look for fresh foods. Where's the fats? Where's the plants? And where's the protein? And where's the live food? I always food. ask my kids. They want a snack. Okay, need something live something that's not dead and cooked to death, right? And they get funny looks from their friends at school, you know? We have to eat something alive. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Um, okay, so uh, let's get back to vinegar, because this is something that can be taken internally, externally, um, and you can clean with it. This is a, a fantastic, everyone should have a bottle of this. You don't have to buy the organic raw unfiltered to mop your floors with. I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> but um, apple cider vinegar is really, uh, has a lot of health benefits. And um, you can take a tablespoon of this with some water every day, and it has wonderful properties. Um, it, the, raw the raw unfiltered kind, you see there's like a little bit of sedimentation here on the bottom. Um, is um, it, it, this is shock full with minerals and vitamins and enzymes? Um, it has a uh, alkalizing effect on your body. You know, you, you differentiate between it's a spectrum really uh, of acidic, acidic to alkaline, and you want to be towards the alkaline side. Uh, that's where you're going to find the greatest health. And, and you can see, taking a look at it, you can see it looks kind of chunky, kind of funky, right? So all the natural stuff, you notice that it's not as pretty as the refined foods, right? So this would typically be filtered, so it would be more marketable. So it's prettier when you look at it, right? But that's usually a warning sign. It's like your fruits and vegetables, if they're too pretty, guess what? They're probably, right, sprayed, right? So they kept the bugs off them. Give me mine with little dents and bug holes in them and everything, because I know that if the bugs won't eat it, I should need it either. Okay, go ahead. You can just, do, someone actually told me about that recently, I think it was really, but I took a shot glass and I poured it and I went, oh, yeah. yeah, no, it's acidic. Was it a tequila wow. chaser? I'm like, wow, I, mean, I don't know if I was supposed to fix it. Yeah. You yeah. can do it, oh, yeah, I did. you know, if you can stomach it or just add some water to it. Yeah, it's, it's acidic, but it has an alkalizing effect on your body. Okay, yeah, kind of like, the, like lemons, yeah. for instance. Yeah, I do lemon water in the morning, yeah. so I... Yeah, yeah, that's great. It tends to um, to um, increase metabolism and uh, lowers blood sugar. Uh, and so there are a lot of really good qualities, and a, lot, a lot of good properties, I should say. This. Um, I, you know, when you, you were talking about cleaning, you've got to clean your clothes, too. Right. And um, I like to use seventh generation for several products. And uh, they happen to have a really good rating also. Uh, there are a lot of laundry detergents out there. <coughs> Excuse me. And there are an awful lot, there are awful lot of chemicals, a lot of 
synthetic fragrances and um, most of them you just want to steer clear of because that gets into the fabric of your clothes and then it rubs on you all day long and you absorb, your skin is the largest organ in your body, it's an organ, and you absorb into your bloodstream that which you come in contact with, that which you, you know, put on your skin. And so, you This is an important something. point, okay? What we're talking about here, when we talk about just entering into just the, the sleeping story, okay? So, everything from your sleep environment, but also your sleep surface, like what kind of mattress are you sleeping on? So some of the most toxic materials in the world are the, uh, the fire retardant chemicals that they'll spray onto mattresses, right? So the big idea is they'll make the argument that it keeps you from you know, going up in flames. The problem is, is you are constantly, there's an outgassing of these chemicals. And you think about your mattress, how much time you spend on there. And you know, every five, 10 years you're getting a new mattress, just starts that new outgassing process, right? So you're, now you're sucking that in, you're breathing in, but right through your skin. And then you put bed covers on top of that, right? And what are your sheets made out of? And, you know, are you using organic cotton, right? Think about this. What are you using for detergent to wash those sheets? Are you using an organic pillow, right? So what kind of outgassing are you subjecting yourself on a regular basis? Guys, we're asking you to think. Think of, make your investments where you want to make your investments, where you're going to get the biggest impact, right? We will drive to a store and pay eight bucks a gallon for Evian spring water so that we can get pure water and drink it, but we don't think about the detergent that we wash our clothes with and then drape it on our bodies and we absorb those chemicals all day long. Say yes if you've been there, okay? So we're guilty, right? So think about it, pick your battles. This is about progression, not perfection, but where can you get the, get the best bang return on your buck? Okay? So look at things like, look at my sleep surface, look at my sheets, my pillows, the detergents, because that's on my skin and my family skin every day. This is where you want to make your investments in your health, proactively investing in your health, right? Bamford's locker, too. I, I stopped using yeah. 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 the Yeah. The, the dryer sheets. The whole laundry industry. Yeah. 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 And you know, yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. And you, you know, some, some of those detergents will... Um, have a scent, you know, it's yeah. very flowery and invigorating, and it sits in your clothes and in your uh, sheets for days and days, you know. If you want to know how, how readily your skin absorbs chemicals, weigh yourself before and after a 10 minute hot shower. See how much water you just absorb right through your skin. Right? So, yeah, it's striking. I mean, you guys know the patches that they use for different drugs, right? whether it's birth control or cigarette um, addiction, right? So that, right, they just put it right on your skin, right? It's as good as injecting it. Think about that, okay? Yeah. Yeah. What else you got? So mattresses, you were talking about mattresses, um, they, I, I don't know if you mentioned, they, they say that they outgas for about 10 years. Yeah. Organic mattress stuff. <laughs> or go and down to Gardeners garden. has a really good um, organic line also. So we take your the owner of Gardner and he came to one of my workshops and he said, Dr. Branson, will you design a mattress for me? I said, absolutely. So I said, it has to be chiropractically correct, it has to be all organic, and it has to be a sustainable production. He said, okay, done. So there's this France and Sleepwell model down at Gardner Mattress that you can get. And I wish I got a kickback, right? <laughs> but I don't. But uh, they come in three, uh, three firmnesses. So, um, Firm, super firm, and wicked firm. <laughs> <laughs> right, those are the three yeah. What do you got to do about Okay, so cosmetics and body products. Um, quickly on cosmetics, it's like pick your poison because the cosmetic industry is the least re uh, regulated, the most unregulated industry in our country. And like I mentioned earlier, the um, standards in Europe are much stricter. And so, um, if they ever, if they ever uh, tell you in their advertisement that they uh, that the European community has approved of the product, then you're probably um, safe. But um, I would just go to um, the health food store for cosmetics. Anything really at the mall, you know that you're gonna. It may stay on really well. <laughs> It also stays in. <laughs> but, you know, you, you absorb it all. And if you drink a lot of water 
and you get your sleeping and you get your chiropractic and you, you uh, eat healthy, you, your skin is going to naturally glow. So, you know, you don't want to cover it up. Anyway. I stopped using any makeup whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you don't need that. Except this. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Avalon Organics. That's uh, Dr. Franson's uh, skin cream of choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, good rating also. It's just the, the, the ingredients are just made with um, pure oils and uh, they don't have any parabens which have been linked to various types of cancer. It's a, a preservative. And um, just made with environmentally conscious. Sunblock? Sunblock, yes. Well, let me first uh, talk about body and lotion. We talked about how important it is to choose what you put on your skin. You made a great point. Uh, coconut oil is a great moisturizer and can be, uh, you can use it on your skin, your hair, and your, and your face. Um, I've come across a great company called Verafina that I highly recommend. You can't buy it in stores. I'm, I'm working on um, seeing if we can um, um, you know, help you get it if that's if you would like to. It's a great company. It's a small company started by a mom out west who was researching uh, baby care products when she was having a baby and she was just appalled at the lack of uh, healthy alternatives. And so she started this company and uh, they're 99% natural ingredients. They have a fantastic rating um, and um, I, I just feel really comfortable putting this on my skin. What's the name again? Um, it's called Verafina, is the company. You can go online and you can look at it. Um, and it has, they have a line that's not very, it's not a very expensive line. But you know, we don't need that many different items, right? So this is the, the facial, facial cream. And what I also like about it is that Somebody has said that you're not supposed to put anything on your skin that you can't eat, right? Which is it's a little difficult. But this here um, kind of expires after three months because they don't have hardly any preservatives. And when they do have to have a preservative for their products, they actually um, make sure that it's one that does not sink into your skin and pass into your bloodstream. So, that's a good, that's a good company. The, the calendula um, ointment I use for, I had an accident and I was all scraped up. That yeah, calendula scarring ointment is, yeah. is amazing medicinal effect on the scrapes. Yes. Yeah, and that's our kids' choice too. Everyone it's should have a, They always want that. Yeah, everyone should have too a calendula cream. Get it in the health food stores. It's great for scrapes and cuts and, you know, instead of use more, which is a, a And then we have, um, here. Oh, deodorant. Everybody knows not to pick an uh, antiperspirant. People know that now, right? Because antiperspirants, they all have aluminum. And you put it right there next to your, um, to your glands, yes. And there's um, you know, a lot of lymph nodes in your, in your armpits. So you, you want to use a deodorant and the Desert Essence is a really good choice. Also has a lot of natural natural oils and natural ingredients. Tom's has another one. And, uh, Tom's toothpaste too, right? So, Tom's toothpaste, yes, doesn't have. Uh, made in Maine, we want to support the Northeast, right? And Dina, uh, they've got one that tastes like black licorice. <laughs> okay, I'm there. <laughs> yeah, Tom's. Do you know that those other commercially produced toothpastes have um, sugar in them? Which is just so bizarre to me. They would put sugar in toothpaste, but they do. Um, so this is, a, a, this is actually also uh, fluoride free. There's a lot of controversy around fluoride. Fluoride is a, you know, they, they put that on kids' teeth. The fluoride is a bit highly, highly it's toxic. It's a neurotoxin. It's, it's worse than mercury. And so you can get natural fluoride. If you're concerned, natural fluoride, you can get that through um, herb tea. 
there are there's naturally occurring fluoride in tea, in, in herb tea. So baking soda is great too. Toothpaste that have baking soda in it, just yep. create an alkaline environment in the mouth. Yeah. Oh, it's on sale. At stop and shop. This week. On sale. Oh, stop and shop. Oh, everybody run. Stop and shop. No. <laughs> Sorry. I was just going to ask, what do you use for the kids? Have you, have you used the Jasons or for the yes, toothpaste? Yes, both. Okay. Um, Tom's. They, Tom's has one. Um, silly strawberry. Okay. Cool mint. You know, I have to have two different kinds for my kids. Sam's a little sensitive to the mint. <laughs> okay. It's too spicy. It's too spicy. Um, and so, uh, let's see, skin, I mean, uh, sunscreen, we're coming up on the time of the year where sunscreen is going to be applied. Now remember, <coughs> we have almost engineered sunshine out of our lives. Up here in New England, we don't get enough, period, anyway, no matter what we do, unless we go south between like October and April. And that's why we always recommend vitamin D, by the way. Supplementing vitamin Supplement, D, so vitamin D3 supplement. Four to six thousand international units. I use vitamin D in the fourth quarter of the year and the first quarter of the year, the winter months, right? And then drop to about two thousand every day just for maintenance. Because just spending twenty minutes in the sun, you're going to get a hundred thousand. I use it. Yeah, and so um, we want to make sure that we get some sun on our bodies without sunscreen in the summer. Now, before the sun is at its peak, so first thing in the morning and first in, and later in the afternoon, we should not have sunscreen on. We need that to be able to convert um, and produce our vitamin D, which we produce in our body. Yeah, your ancestors, you know, they they would they would spend time, midday in the sun. They would go into the cave and have siesta, right? So you know. They, they were smart enough to get out of the sun between, you know, 11 and 1 or 11 and 2, right? So when the sun's high, they would get out, right? So, you know, the, the skin damage that we get is usually because we spend all day indoors underneath these things, and all of us get so white that by the time we get to go surf in Costa Rica, we crisp, right? And that cycle of white to burn, white to burn, that's the danger zone. Everybody get that? So please don't be fearful of the sun, okay? So the sun is, this, you know, it, it's a source of great energy, and you need that vitamin D stimulation. And also, by all means, spend time in the sun without sunglasses. You pick up a lot of energy, especially through the retina of your eye, from the sun, and so you want to spend at least half an hour every day in natural sunlight without glasses on. Yeah. And any knowledge on um, the, the mineral powder sunscreens that they have out now? It's just uh, like a mineral powder and you just kind of brush it on? Yeah. I honestly don't know too much about it, but I know that it's a better choice than some of the other. Uh, they have makeup like that also. That's a better choice than those creams that go into your skin. They tend to stay a little bit more on the surface and not get absorbed as much as the other ones. Yep. Okay, can we um, can we move to our next subject? You didn't yeah. name this with the sunscreen. Oh, what's the problem? Sorry. Um, just two choices here, and that is Alba Botanica. Alba Botanica. Alba Botanica. Alba Botanica. By the way, they also recommend you not to. I don't know if they do. No. Um, Whole Foods. Yeah. Whole Foods has it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this one gets really good ratings. Badger. Badger. This it makes you a little paste for this. It has a lot of zinc oxide. That's the active um, sunscreen agent. Um, they also say that you really shouldn't be have more than 15 SPF because it becomes. Um, what's that? Redundant. No, but they it have to it use. It's a toxic burden. It's a toxic burden yeah. when you go much above that. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. Yeah. Right? So just 15, and you know that means 15 times regular production. Yeah. So maybe put on. You know they have now they have SPF clothing also. Right. Okay. So. Okay. Okay. So shift okay. gears to the heart. So we've gone from the home to the heart, and uh, I don't know about you guys, but in our family, 
we have felt the strain of the demands of time and schedule. Say yes if you're there. Okay? And there are implications and consequences to that. Not just to the, you know, to the people experiencing that, but to, to your downline, <laughs> you know, to your children as well. It changes the dynamic of the house, right? When everybody's so rushed and harried. And what we try to do in Bonfire, in the Bonfire program, is we try to teach people mechanisms that you can put in place that create the space and time to make healthy habits habituated. Okay, so to be able to build these things into your life, right? So when I say a mechanism, that means that you can identify that's what we do to, do, like for example, if you feel, you know, like a quarterly vacation in place is a mechanism to make sure that you and your family get some away time, that's great. If you feel in your marriage that it's a good idea to have a date night, that's a mechanism to make sure that there's some romantic life there, right? And you've, you've, you've put that, you've carved that time out to make sure that there's space and time for that thing to happen. Say so yes, if you guys get that, okay? Well, um, Camille and I, as you know, we, we've known nothing but working together, okay? So for, from student life, through work, etc., we've known nothing but that. So we've always been super busy, and we, it's always been part of our relationship. It's intrinsic to everything that we do. So that being said, as she started staying home with the, uh, to raise the children, and I was at the uh, I was at the practice and working, there was there was some disparity in our schedules. Not as much collision, not as many interactions, not as many opportunities. And you know, I'm a morning guy, like so. I'm bing 4:30 in the morning. I'm awake and I'm let's rock and roll. And she's like, get away from me, <laughs> right? And I, and at the end of the day, I'm I'm smoked. I've la I've left it all on the field, you know. And she's like, okay, honey. Let's talk quality time, right? So there was a there was a disconnect there. There was a misalignment there, right? So what would happen as we got busier and busier is the family is a bit of a corporation, isn't it? It's like running a business, right? So there were there are meetings that need to happen, okay? And there are exchanges of information that have to happen. You need to make decisions together, plans together, and discuss issues and problems and challenges, etc. Right? So what happens when you only have that limited amount of time for interaction? is all of those things start spilling into that time together. Anybody been there? Okay. So at the end of the day, it's always this exchange of to-do lists and, hey, did you do this? Did you do that? I'm going to talk to you about something and we get to discuss this. And of course, every guy in the room rolls their eyes and says, oh, was your question, which show would you like to watch right now? Was that the question? Right? And you just, you know, literally, you want cave time, right? You want to shut her down, right? And, you know, for us, there, there was, all of that sort of meeting stuff was trespassing on our couple time. Okay? And then it got serious, okay? because it started to spill into date night, okay? and the meetings and the discussions would spill into date night, right? and I don't know about you guys, but I want to get lucky on date night. Right? <laughs> so it's, you know, that's not the most romantic setting when you start grinding through your checklist and to-do list, right? So we came up with, it was your idea, came up with an, um, a, just a brilliant concept okay? called the coffee break. Okay? And the coffee break, she said this, uh, the first one was, I got a uh, babysitter for this Sunday, um, and I have you for two and a half hours. And I'm like, what? In my brain, I was kind of like going, two and a half hours? I mean, how is that even possible, right? <laughs> and the rest is history, because it has turned into the most extraordinary time um, uh, of the week for us, um, because of how it, it benefits all the other moments of the week. Okay. So um, Camille is so patient and so flexible, and she's also very much on purpose. She totally understands what we're trying to accomplish here and what we're trying to do in chiropractic on behalf of humanity. So she's really tolerant, and she lets me do a lot of things, right? So the fact of the matter is, is we know that we've got that time on Sunday where we can come together, and she has my undivided attention, and I have hers. Okay? So that's our time for our meeting, and we cherish it. And we know that, you know, we sit down, she, I get my black coffee, she gets her latte, right? It's like her one coffee of the week, right? And uh, she gets a buzz while she has a cup of coffee, right? <laughs> Thank you. So, Dr. Snow White. Uh, and, you know, so, you know, I, I know my role in this meeting. Listener, okay? So I sit back, I've got out my iPad, and she's got hers. We go through the calendar and the checklist and the to-do list. And the benefits are extraordinary because we both show up and we respect each other's time a great deal. So we show up prepared, and we know that we, what we want to talk about, and we have our lists, et cetera, and we grind through those things. And it's not just that quiet time where we're focused, and I'm not fighting for her attention, and the kids aren't fighting for her attention, and it's that it, it affects all of our other time together. Because 
at night, she knows she's got me on Sunday. And if there's something pressing, it's on her list, right? Or if I need to discuss something with her and I know she's exhausted, I know that I have her on Sunday to go through that kind of thing. Say yes if you guys get this dynamic, okay? And if one of us slips up and says, you know, can I talk, you be like, hey, can I wait till Sunday? That's a, it's a hint of saying, let's, let's, let's do this in the right environment, right? And then I, I just, I cherish it and I found it extraordinary. So I hope that that's a gift for you guys from us. Steve, I'd like that. to add something. Uh, yes. it's, it's, it's a YouTube video, it's called Male and Female Brains. Maybe someone's seen it. It was recommended to me. Yeah. And it's how the male and female brain differ. And it's by a couples counselor who does the comedy shit with it. It's a who, and it's right on time. What's the name of the, the male and female brains? Male and female brains. Comedy. If you Google that on okay. YouTube, it'll we'll check come it out. up. And it's a who, and it's right on. Right on. And John it's Gray's right classic, um, uh, "Women are from Venus, men are from Mars." Is that how it goes? Um, is a classic, and it's and it is fantastic, and it's very much in line with sort of the principles of the Bonfire Program, and that you know we're hardwired to behave certain ways, and we should appreciate that about each other. You understand that. It's a, yeah. such an advantage. It's like having the owner's manual for your meat. You know, it's like, oh, I get it. There that is. <laughs> if you think about it, and the, the, those very important decisions we have to make in life, you know, who, is, uh, who we're going to uh, spend our time with and how we're going to raise our children and so on, that there's like no license you have to, there's really no preparation, very little preparation. It should be required reading, you know. Yes, yeah, I agree <laughs> with that. You prepare for it. Um, we have some what we call essential nutrients in our life, and I have to say that the coffee break is definitely an essential nutrient for us. Um, it is really, I cannot say enough, it, it is um, something that is uh, not time consuming, but it is so rich, and there is so much heart into it, and it, you can sail through the week when you feel like you have that Connection. connection together and I so look forward to those um, and it's something that we will never stop you know when you um, I can speak for myself but I know other women we have a, 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 a group here um, a friends and family care practice called mom's tribe anyone is invited to to come and share you don't have to have little kids you can you know be a mom or want to be a mom or a grandmother who can share with the rest of us and the ups and downs of motherhood and, and so on and so forth. I know from experience that um, breaking away from the kids can be, it's a matter of the heart. It's, it's, you don't want to leave them. They're so wonderful and you, you feel like you want to be there. But this is, that's a gift to them as well. Because let's face it, as parents, what are you ultimately to them? Your role models role model to them, not just how to eat and how to, how to uh, move and, and the habits that should, they should have, but you need to role model what, what kind of relationship you want your children to choose with their mate as they grow up, right? And if you, if in order for you to be able to role model that properly, you have to fill your cup and you have to show them that you put work and time and effort into it. And the connection that you get when you come together and you have this, these, um, these times together, it, it just spills over into everything you do. And there is this harmony in the family, um, you know, an increased level of harmony after the coffee break versus before. It just, and, and you renew it every week. You don't wait for a crisis. You know? so Did you hear that last piece? No. So you, it's scheduled. It's a mechanism. It's in place. It's not treating a crisis, okay? It sounds like a wellness paradigm to you. It's there, it's a choice. You put it in place to fill the cup. That's the sufficiency. If things are missing like connection and respect and unconditional love, these are the things that happen, that these are the nutrients that you pull out of a coffee break, right? These, if these are missing, that's, the, that's what I mean by deficiency. So when those things are missing in a relationship, that's a deficiency. So what do we see? We see adaptive behavior. We see adaptive physiology, okay? Just like with the rest of our physiology, if a, if a nutrient is missing, if you're missing vitamin C, what happens? What do you get? Scurvy. If you're missing vitamin D, what do you get? Rickets, right? Okay? If you're, if you're missing unconditional love, what do you get? 
And if you're missing connection, what do you get? See, we can't. What do you get? Facebook? You know, so it's like, with, think about it, guys. You, we, have, we have adaptive physiology. If our relationships are not built in with mechanisms that create the space and time in this crazy, unnatural, frenetic world where we can freely give to each other and share and be a source of those essential nutrients and offer those up to each other, recognizing that we need each other in exchange for that. We're communal beings. So you have to create the space and time for that. And don't put a lot of pressure on what happens during the coffee break. Sit down and share some silence. When's the last time you did that? You know, to be able to sit back and chill out, right? And, you know, it doesn't have to be coffee, okay? But, uh, you know, that's, I think that's how she harangled me into it, was just like, you know, two hours of coffee, I'm there, right? <laughs> so, you know, ultimately, don't put pressure on, on it, you know. Uh, but, you know, this is something that's been so, so infectious with the people around us that, you know, we, I mean, we, we get to travel around and, and speak, and, and um, we know a lot of paraprofessionals in our space. And so many of them have taken this concept and taken this idea and brought it into their own marriages and their own families and their own friendships and lives and brought it into their own practices and their own businesses. It's really spread. And I think it'd be really cool if we started like a coffee break club on Facebook or something, right? And imagine if people around the world were identifying different cafes and bookshops and stuff. That'd be a good place. Instead of going on a date night, you know, it'd be a place where you'd go for a coffee break. Sounds like a good idea. And we were talking about maybe putting together a workbook like a his and hers workbook to sort of guide the process gently and see if you can get some traction. Kristen. My question is, because I know you're traveling a lot as well, and I'm sure you have a busy social calendar with like weddings and other events. If there's a Sunday that you can't, do you try and work your coffee break into the week? Or do you no, we're say very rigid. no to certain <laughs> Do you just say no to certain events? Or do you like skip a week? I mean, I, don't, I know like our weekend calendar probably just because our kids are younger, and there's like we just have so many birthday parties and family close by. Like our weekends are typically book solid. It's a great logistical yeah. question. Yeah. yeah. Well, first of all, no is a not word. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Excuse me. We need to feel comfortable saying no sometimes because you're so obligation. Yeah. Sometimes you have to, you you have to because you need to protect the core, right? Mm -hmm. You need to protect the family, and um, yes, you you can work it around. In fact. We've, I feel like we've become skilled in this, so now we can sometimes add it on to date night. We do it beforehand. It's not. I'm not a big fan of that. <laughs> but, but I think what I get. Yeah. Babysitter <laughs> one, babysitter <laughs> one time a week. It logistically and everything is just. And it becomes a reference point too. Yeah. We'll say, well, we'll like we were in California together, right? So we're on an airplane on a Sunday. So we'll say, well, let's do a coffee break together. So let's do a coffee break on the flight out. So we'll stick the kids like nine rows back, you know, and we'll just <laughs> tell their neighbors, good luck. Uh, so <laughs> around the airport to find a Starbucks. Yeah, I mean, just things like know, that. Or sometimes yeah, we'll have a long drive and we'll do a commute together. And yeah. But we, we have a lot of respect for the coffee break, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So it does take a priority, okay? And we won't schedule things because we know, like we do it on Sunday afternoon, because our Sundays are probably the most predictable day for us. I don't know what your family's like, but so we get up in the morning, we go to church, we go for breakfast, we come home, we work out, our friends come over to the hell barn, we all work out together. Then Camilla and I get, we have a coffee break together, and then we get back for the kids and have dinner. So we have like this really kind of predictable Sunday. Whereas our date night, we keep really flexible. It could be Thursday, Friday, Saturday night, or even a Sunday night. Um, because social things come up, and you know we try to do date night just us. Okay, Good. Great. Right. Any other questions on coffee break? <laughs> well, it sounds like it's a way to avoid crisis management. Which is it's, it's like with anything else okay. in life, and Get ahead. something like a treasure, you need to have a preventative. It's the wellness paradigm. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. understanding that, right? <laughs> Don't wait for crisis. Know what. No, study healthy people. Study successful people. Okay. If you want to be wealthy, do you study broke people? Okay. Why, if we want to learn about health, why do we study sick people? Think about that. Okay. So think about all the research that's done out there. Okay. I love the research that says, yeah, um, we did a test of 10,000 healthy individuals, and we found the following over the next five years. Right. Do you know 10 healthy individuals? 
We found 10,000 healthy individuals. <laughs> Congratulations! Is it a convention? I would love to go. Right? You, you mean they're undiagnosed people, right? So they're not in crisis, they're not in hospital beds, so they're healthy people, right? And we did this huge study over 20 years, and this is what they came up with, right? So, you know, at the, at the end of the day, if you want to be successful, study successful people. You want to be wealthy? Study wealthy people. Follow what they do. Watch what they do, okay? If you want to be happy, study happy people. What do they do? How do they spend their, time? spend their time? Listen to their language. Listen to what they put into their brains. Look at who they spend their time with and who they allow influence in them. You want to be healthy? Study healthy people and do what healthy people do. So let me teach you what some of the healthiest people in the world do. Anybody know what this is? Spine, okay? This is a spine. If you, if you and I haven't met yet, I'm a spine guy, all right? So why am I a spine guy? Why am I a chiropractor? Let's start with some more ground rules. Number one, you were designed to be healthy. Say yes if you understand that and believe that. You're designed to be healthy, okay? You're programmed to be healthy. And there's an intelligence that keeps you healthy called innate intelligence, inborn intelligence. Think about this. At one point, you were two cells, a sperm and an egg. They bumped into each other. 16 years later, you're taking the SATs. How awesome are you? Okay? There's an intelligence that runs every single cell in your body, okay? That innate intelligence was present in each of those cells that came together and made you in 270 days. How awesome is that? 270 days, you became you. What have you done in the last 270 days? That intelligence is in every single cell in your body. Scrape them off, it's in every one. All the intelligence that you need to be you is in every cell. How awesome is that? And we just take that for granted until things go sideways. 10,000 breaths a day, 2,000 gallons of blood. We don't have to think of one breath or one drop of blood. How awesome is that? That intelligence, favorite conduit, is your nervous system, okay? Your nervous system is the communication network for your body. Your brain, your brain stem, your spinal cord, your nerve roots. This is the communication pathway for your body. Your body is constantly relating to its external environment and internal environment and adapting readily and appropriately in a very dynamic fashion. Say yes if you understand me. Okay? That adaptation is how you stay healthy. And if you do not adapt properly, that's when you get sick. Okay? <coughs> that adaptation, that relationship that you have, that communication that you have with your environment, internal and external environment, is coursing across your nervous system. So your body is talking to your brain constantly, and your brain talks back to your body. That communication is what keeps you well. It's what keeps you functioning. It's what keeps you healthy. And that intelligence, that exchange of information, is what heals your body. Now, most people think that their brain is running their body, and the body is slave to the brain, right? The brain is this big transmitter up here that tells the body what to do. Do you know what neurologists tell us now? that the brain is actually this incredible receiver that is listening to the body constantly. And there's 40 times as many signals going from the body up to the brain as there are from the brain down to the body. Did you know that? So your body is constantly communicating to your brain what it needs, and then your brain coordinates all the activity. How cool are you? How smart are you? Now, we know this nervous system controls everything. It's called the master system. And we also know it's the most important system in your body. How do we know this? Because it's totally encased in bone for the most part, right? The central nervous system is encased in bone. Your brain sits inside of this skull. The skull is a bony vault that protects your, your brain, right? If you look at the bottom of the skull, there's this hole here at the bottom of the skull called the foramen magnum, which is Latin for big hole, okay? This is where the brain stem comes through, and it goes into the spinal column. Now, the spinal column is this series of bones that are stacked up on top of each other, okay? These vertebrae, or spinal bones, stack up and form a tube of bone. Each one of these vertebrae is separated by a disc. The disc is critically important because it's a spacer. It creates room for these nerve roots that branch off of the spinal cord to exit the spine, get out of that bony tube, and feed your body. <coughs> these nerves branch out and go to every organ, organ system, every tissue in your body, every cell in your body. Your body talks back to the brain, across these nerves, and tells your body what it needs. You guys with me? The brain responds and talks back across these nerves. 
Now these discs have to stay fat and healthy so that there's plenty of room for the nerve to exit the spine so it can breathe, so to speak, and feed the body. Make sense? Now these curves that you have in the spine when you look from the side are absolutely critical. Okay? Now straight away, a spine should be straight up and down. Straight is strong. That's how we teach the kids. I tell them that if you take a straw that's straight and you bend and you put it top to bottom, it stays nice and strong and straight, right? If you put a bend in it, what happens? It fails, right? So straight is strong, front to back. When you turn the spine to the side though, this is when things get interesting. This is a curve system of the spine. This curve system is the spring system of your spine. This is what flex and bends, like your knees bending when you run and walk and carry, okay? These curves are critical because they protect these discs. Your curves are the spring system that will determine your longevity. These curves provide the flexion and forgiveness for your life so that these discs are protected and they can stay fat and healthy and plenty of room for the nerve roots to leave the spine. You guys with me? Okay? These curves are beautiful because when you're born, your spine looks like this, the primary curve. When you take a baby, take an x-ray, they've got one big curve in their back, right? Put that baby down on the floor, they'll pick up their head to see where they're going, right? That's how they develop their secondary curve in their neck. Okay, that's the cervical curve. You see that? Now when they push themselves up and they start crawling, their belly hangs down, and this is where they develop their secondary curve in their low back, the lumbar spine, okay? And then you stand that human being up and that's what you're supposed to look like. That spring will make sure your spine lasts you a lifetime. Everybody with me? Okay. Now, if you experience traumas, either macro traumas, like a slip and fall, a football tackle, fall downstairs, car accidents, the obvious things, you can jar these joints out of a healthy position and cause damage to the tissue like a sprained ankle. That damaged tissue will swell. Swollen tissue crowds these very delicate nerve fibers and irritates the nerve. When you irritate a nerve, bad things happen. You change the information going across that nerve and your body simply just moves away from health. Now, if that goes long enough and nobody catches it or corrects it, eventually something hurts bad enough where you get sick or something breaks down and you're motivated to go find the doctor. And unfortunately, that's where we meet most people. At the end of the problem, not at the beginning of the problem, get it? What the research is showing us now is besides these macro traumas, these big traumas, what happens is people have these unnatural lifestyles now where sitting is the new smoking, right? Where everybody's spending 8, 10, 12 hours a day sitting in, you know, in front of a computer or sitting in a car or sitting on a train or what have you. And when they're not sitting in front of a computer, they're looking at their phone or they're on their iPad. Say yes if you've been there, okay? And what we're seeing is these spines turning into this thing, okay? And we're seeing degeneration and damage to these soft tissues that we've never seen before in teenagers and in the 20-somethings. Their spines are 30 and 40 years older than them because all they do is sit all the time. So you have a few macro traumas in sports and slips and falls when you're a kid. Then you sit that body in front of a, a computer all day long or sit in a chair all day long or sit in a car all day long. Your muscles atrophy, your sedentary lifestyle catches up with you, your core weakens, the joints become weaker, and these toxic postural patterns create subluxation in the spine. Say that with me, subluxation. Subluxation occurs when a spinal joint gets jarred out of a healthy position. That causes stress on the soft tissues that hold it in a healthy position. Just like turning your ankle, a sprained ankle will swell. And that swelling crowds and irritates those very delicate nerve fibers and changes the information that's flowing across those nerves that keeps you healthy and what heals your body. That's called subluxation. Now, you, if you spend any time in our clinic, you'll see that we take care of a lot of children there, okay? And I know that that can be confusing to some of our new patients. Why does a kid need to see a chiropractor, right? Well, did you know that some of our patients experienced their first spinal trauma and therefore their first subluxation during the birth process? in the delivery itself. <clears throat> That's why we make it the highest priority to check each member of the family. And we create a written record for the early detection of problems like subluxation. Mm -hmm. So that all these little ones you see here, and like our little ones, they have the best opportunity to grow up healthy and to, de to develop optimally as opposed to waiting for crisis like you and I were taught. Does that make sense, guys? Mm -hmm. Yes? One last thing, and I'm going to get technical on you. How many senses do we have? Five, right? Do you know that we have six senses? 
Everybody can name the five, right? Say them with me. Sorry. Okay. What's the sixth one? Oh, give her an A. Okay. Everybody go like this. Everybody go like this. Now, without injuring anyone around you, reach around and touch those fingers together in the back of your head. Did everybody do this successfully? Okay. Did you find your other finger? Okay. So hold on. Hold on. Think about this. Keep it back there. Ready? How did you do that? Could you see them? Could you hear them? Could you taste them? Smell them? You couldn't touch them until they touched, right? How did you do that? This is your sixth sense. You can put your arms down. Pass around that natural deodorant. <laughs> That's your sixth sense, and it's called proprioception. Everybody say that with me. Proprioception. Okay? Proprioception is body sense. Okay? <coughs> My hand is here, now it's here, now it's here, now it's here. Okay? How do we get proprioception and how do we get body sense? See, your joints in your body are loaded with these mechanoreceptors, which are nerve endings that are coiled, and when you compress them, they send a signal up to a part of your brain called the cerebellum. Cerebellum is in charge of body sense and body position, among other things. So when you move around, when joints move, they send signals to your brain to tell your body where you are in space and time. How cool is that? How smart are you, right? Where do you think the largest concentration of proprioceptive re receptors are in the body? In the spinal joints, okay? Where do you think the highest concentration in the spine is? In the neck, you know how we call this the arc of life, okay? So watch this. Your body is in one of two states, sympathetic or parasympathetic. Sympathetic is fight or flight, okay? Last week when we were in San Diego, I took off with Dr. Paul and went surfing, believe it or not, all right? So he and I took off, we paddled out a place called Grandview, awesome spot, we love this place, right? And we're paddling out and we're watching the sats and Paul and I, you know, when we show up at a spot, we're there to make drops, not make friends, right? So he goes left, I go right, you know? So we are sitting on the outside and all of a sudden, a couple of sets come in, right? So we've got, we're starting to time the sets and we see the bigger waves coming in. Third, fourth waves are the best waves, right? So we're paddling out, we're going over the waves, going over the waves, and Paul takes off on the second one. And I'm paddling with this other guy. So it's a paddle battle. I'm trying to figure out who's gonna get it. And I saw the fourth one was bigger and better. So I looked at him and I said, to the third one, this one's all you, dude. <laughs> so he took the third one, right? I go over the top of the third one, I come down. Just saw that perfect wave coming right for me, so I'm paddling out to go get it. And all of a sudden, <laughs> dorsal fin comes up right like where Camilla is. Notice I didn't tell her this story. Right. <laughs> I mean, douche, I could have reached out and grabbed the fin, right? When I say stress response, okay, I could have pulled a Jesus Christ impersonation and walked my board to the beach, right? So I was my, immediately, doosh, 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 my heart, but, but it was a beautiful dolphin just coming to surf the wave with me and he was charged. But there was that nanosecond where I was not sure that the 800 pound mammal that just rolled up on me with that big dorsal fin right at arm's reach was it not one of the men in gray suits, okay? I went into full sympathetic fight or flight response, say yes if you've been there, where your entire body goes into this physiological shift in state, okay? That's called sympathetic fight or flight response, stress response. The opposite of the sympathetic stress response is parasympathetic, okay? Parasympathetic, say that with me. Parasympathetic is rest and repair and reproduction. So we've got fight or flight, and we've got rest, repair, healing, and reproduction. Okay, you see how those two are different? Your body is either in sympathetic or it's in parasympathetic. You're not in both at the same time. You're either sympathetically charged or you're parasympathetically charged. You're either in drive or you're in reverse. Say yes if you get it, okay? Where do you want to spend most of your time? Parasympathetic, rest and repair and reproduction, right? Or at least practice. Right? Where do you think most people spend most of their time now? Sympathetic. Sympathetic, fight or flight, stress response. 
with these stress hormones that are just coursing through their bodies all the time, this low-grade chronic social stress grinding and grinding on you, do you know that that changed your physiology? Think about it. When I saw that fin roll up in me, what was I thinking? Fight or flight. I wanted to get out of there, right? So what happened to my blood pressure? Do you think it went up or down? Heart rate, up or down? Okay, what, did it, what about my blood sugar, up or down? Up, why? Dump that energy substrate into my bloodstream so I can get out of Dodge, right? How about my circulating lipids? Cholesterol. Why cholesterol? What if that thing bit me? Cholesterol's for wound repair, right? So I need energy substrates, right? So my heart rate's up, my breathing's right, right? That's all stress response. So guess what? When you're freaking out and you're all stressed out, whether it's you're worried about your relationship or you're worried about your job or a bad boss or a bad situation, do you know your body doesn't know the difference between that and that shark? Do you get that? So if you're walking around right now and you got all that tension in your belly, everybody breathe with me right now. I didn't hear that. Let it out. One more. One more, they're free. Who felt that? Feel your physiology just shift like that? Okay. How easy was that? Okay. We can shift and change our physiology. Okay. When your body is moving properly, that stimulation, that proprioceptive stimulation from your joints moving properly charges your brain and resets you into parasympathetic rest and repair. When the joints in your spine are moving properly, it charges your brain to take you from a stress state to a relaxed healing state. When you are subluxated, you don't move properly, the joints don't move properly because the tissue is damaged and it swells and the joint gets stuck. You notice when we motion palpate your spines to check you? We're looking for the joints that aren't moving properly. When a joint is stuck, it doesn't move properly and you don't get that parasympathetic stimulation. You don't get that proprioceptive stimulation of the brain. In fact, not only do you get a deficiency of proprioceptive stimulation to your brain, you get a noxious stimulation, nociception, a toxicity. Deficiency, toxicity, sound familiar, guys? You get a toxic input into your nervous system, which pushes you into stressed state sympathetic response adaptive physiology, chronic disease, and ill health. So do you guys think we could get this serious and this excited about chiropractic if it was about back pain, neck pain, and headaches? Say yes if you got that. So when we, we could have, would you guys agree we could have done anything in healthcare? We could have done anything in healthcare. We have dedicated our entire lives, our being, to bringing this message to people to help them understand that an optimally functioning <coughs> spine is essential for optimum health. It's not about back pain, neck pain, stiffness. Those are symptoms of a deeper underlying, very serious problem called subluxation. And subluxation will create a deficiency that will literally choke the health and the healing out of your body. So, if you have not yet had your spine and nervous system checked, you should get your spine and nervous system checked, and we would be honored to do that for you. Our clinic is a world-class clinic. We are filled with giving, loving, serving people. Yes, raise your hand if you're a patient in our clinic. Look around. Is it a good idea for these people to get their spine and nervous system checked? Yes. Yeah. Okay. We will make that available to any of our guests here tonight. Okay. If you want to get your spine and nervous system checked, we will do our whole day one uh, new patient experience with you, which is a consultation with the doctor, a complete examination, any x-rays that are necessary, and a complete report of the findings with the doctor. We will explain exactly what we found and how we can help you. Now, that's usually a $285 exam. We'll do that for just $47 because you're our guest here tonight, and we would love to do that for you. Okay? Yeah. The doctor is in the back of the room. Dr. Derek, could you raise your hand? Dr. Justin, you guys have schedules? Okay, so these guys have a schedule. If you want to schedule an appointment to get a checkup, please do that tonight, and we will do that for you. And as always, the choice is yours. You have a choice right now. You're literally at a fork in a road. You can either keep doing what you've been doing, or you will keep getting what? What you've been getting. Or you can decide, you know what? Tonight, I'm going to start a better way. I'm going to start doing things differently. I'm going to start employing the strategies that have been proven to give people better health outcomes because I'm worth it. But the choice is yours. A life of possibility and a life of probability. 
A life of probability is the one that you would have lived if you had never even came here tonight. You'd probably just keep going on and living that life. But there's a life of possibility that we would love to come alongside you and walk with you. I love and appreciate you guys. Camille and I so appreciate you giving us your time here tonight. Can we give her a round of applause? I would like to reach out and say a big thank you to our team, our amazing A team here at Friends of Family Chiropractic, Dr. Woo! Justin, Dr. Derek. <laughs> She's there. Yeah. Couldn't do it without you. Love and appreciate all you do. I know. Yeah. All right, gang. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.